Okay, good work. I'm assuming, uh, Peretz Yone, I'm assuming you could hear me. Um, yeah, you're good. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so we, um, we're moving on to the next subject. Hilchas <clears throat> Bayer. Bayer is totally different than than Hilchas Bishel. I actually saw something today in a sefer that said that Bayer is different than the rest of Hilchas Shabbos, where the rest of Hilchas Shabbos, when you learn the halachas, you end up learning leniencies that you thought you weren't allowed to do, which based on a lot of the questions that we've received. There were a lot of leniencies that people were not were not uh, aware of, and and okay, Baruch Hashem, hopefully it was clarified. And there were many things that become mutter. In Bayer, it works the total opposite. In Bayer, and when you, <clears throat> when you learn Hilchas Bayer, you end up being more strict, which is if that's what we have to do. That's what we have. This is not about being lenient or strict. This is about doing what the Torah wants. But when you learn Hilchas Bayer, you uh, you end up being stricter. So if anybody wants to log off now, <laughs> no, that wouldn't be the right thing to do. But uh, point is, is that Bayer is very unique. It's probably the number one malacha of the Lamates malachas, where people actually make make mistakes, and sometimes they could be mistakes even also from the Torah. But Hilchas Bishel, as we learn, very difficult to to be over on an Issa Daraisa. But on Hilchas Bayer, it is very easy to be over on an Issa, an Issa Daraisa. Um, when you're eating, eating chalant, you can be eating jelly beans, you could be whatever it is, you could end up doing something that's really not allowed. So it's it's really, it's very important. And it's it's quite confusing. These this, these halachas of Hilchas Bayer are, are quite confusing. The Mishnaburu writes that it's, 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 I don't know if he says, I don't remember the exact Lushen that he says, the, the exact terminology that he uses, but he says that um, it is from the most, the easiest ways to be Michal Shabbos. Again, obviously not doing it on purpose, but it's one of the easiest ways to be Michal Shabbos is, is through Hilchas Bayer. Just to bring an example of why Hilchas Bayer is so confusing, and that is the we paskin again we're gonna we're gonna go back and discuss everything from scratch but we paskin that peels of fruits and vegetables are butter right so now with this there's actually two levels that we have to understand some things don't have butter if it doesn't have butter then you could do whatever you want separate it when you want how you want whatever it is that's not a problem that's if it has if it's not considered a mixture but many times something is considered a mixture, which, and then there's many ways that you're allowed to separate the mixture. But if you don't do it in all the right way and meet all three criteria of how you separate a mixture, then it's a problem. Meaning sometimes we'll say this is not butter, in which case you could separate it whichever way you want. And then sometimes we say it is butter, so you have to do it in the proper way. But then sometimes we forget that if you get one of the ways, right, there's three ways that you have to be able to do burn. You have to meet all three in order for it to, to qualify as not separating, as not butter. So we get confused and we forget. We say, oh, it's not butter if you do it that way. No, it is butter and you have to do it properly. For example, um, and then I'll get back to the confusion part in a second. So there's three, there's three ways, three things, three criteria that have to be met in order to make something not butter. And Bez Hashem in the coming weeks will go through each one of them. So um, there's no reason to post questions about specific scenarios that you have unless, it, unless it's part of what we're actually discussing. Because it's going it takes it's going to take time to go through all the scenarios. So again, we're going to reiterate and we're going to go through all these these haterim. But basically, you need to meet three criteria if something is in order for it not to be butter. That means you have to separate it with your hand. You cannot use a utensil. That's requirement number one. A fork and a knife is not considered a utensil. That's considered an extension of your hand because you just don't want to get your hands dirty. But a, uh, a, uh, 
a colander, that is clearly a utensil that would not be allowed. So again, the first heter is that if something is considered a mixture, again, if it's not a mixture, it's not butter, you can do whatever you want. If it is a mixture, then you have then you there are ways to separate it, but you have to meet all three criteria. The first one is that you can only do it by hand. The second one is that it has to be the good from the bad. And the third one is that it has to be for immediate use. Now that third one, I believe, is what throws many people off. So for example, somebody decides Friday night, they wanna set the table for Friday night for Shabbos morning. So they wash all the dishes, all the forks and the knives Friday night, and now they're holding a pile of forks and knives and spoons in their hand, okay? And now they wanna set the table. So even if you think to yourself, okay, I'll just take the good from the bed. So right now I want the forks. So I'll take the forks out. I'm using my hand, so that's fine. And I'm gonna take the good from the bed, meaning right now I want forks. I'll take the forks from away from the spoons and the knives, that's fine. But you're setting the table eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, Friday night for 12 o'clock in the afternoon the next day, that's not immediate use. That would be butter. Again, we're going to go back and discuss all these scenarios. I'm just trying to bring out where the confusion comes from. Meaning, if you were taking the, the, the silverware from a drawer and you have the fork section and the knife section and the spoon section, that's not butter. That's not a mixture. Then you could take from there and set the table Friday night for Shabbos Day because it's not a mixture. But if you were to wash the dishes and now they're all piled up in one big mixture, then you're not allowed to set the table Friday night for Shabbos day because you're missing one of the three requirements. You need to meet all three requirements. You're missing one of the requirements, which is for immediate use. And setting the table Friday night for Shabbos day is not immediate use. So again, it's a very fine, a fine example, a fine, it's, well, it's an example of how fine the halach is. You can speak to a friend and a friend says, yeah, I asked my Rav and he said that I could set the table Friday night for Shabbos day. And then somebody else says, what do you mean? But I spoke to my Rav and my Rav said, you can't set the table. Well, the difference could very well be this. The person who asked the Rav, I have all my forks and knives in separate compartments in the drawer. Can I set my table Friday night? And the Rav would say, yes, you can. The person didn't, was not aware. Again, this is just an example. The person's not aware that the reason why the Rav said it's okay is because it's not butter, because each one was in a separate compartment, so that's not considered a mixture, and therefore it's okay. The other person who asked the Rav, and the Rav says, no, you can't, said, well, I have a pile of dishes after the Friday night meal, a pile of, of utensils, forks, knives, spoons, or plates, big plates, small plates, whatever it is, and I want to set the table, and the Rav says, says no, because that's butter and butter has to be done for immediate use. Same thing, another common example is people that want to take out clothing Friday night for Shabbos morning. Depending on where, you know, one person can ask the Shiloh and the Shiloh can come back, yes, you could take out your clothing Friday night for Shabbos day. But that's where in the draw, there was separate section for shirts and separate section for pants and separate section for socks, and it's not a mixture. But if something would be a mixture and you have a pile of socks and you want to get the yellow socks instead of the blue socks, then that's a mixture. And you would not be able to take the clothing off Friday night for Shabbos day because you're missing that one, that one criteria, which is that it has to be for immediate use. Again, Bezaz Hashem will discuss all the scenarios of immediate use, but these are the differences, these small little nuances that can make all the difference in whether it's butter or not. Another interesting halacha, getting back to why butter is so confusing, which is a peel of an orange, a peel of an apple, a peel of a vegetable is considered butter. So the question is, how can you peel a vegetable? So you have to meet the three criteria. Okay, so you can peel it with a, you're not gonna peel it with your hand. So we said, okay, a knife would be okay. A knife is an extension of your hand. Let's say, okay, well, we're going to discuss whether a peeler can be used or not as a big disagreement in the, in the puzzle, right? Immediate use, which means that you cannot peel oranges um, Friday night for a fruit salad Shabbos day. That's not immediate use. That's a problem. But what about taking the good from the bad? How do you take peel an orange? Again, the bad is the, is the, is the peel of the orange, and the orange is the good. 
you're taking the bad away from the good. So how can you possibly, if we say that this butter from a peel, from an orange peel to an orange or an apple peel to an apple, then how is that not butter? You're taking the bad from the good. There's no way around it. As far as I know, there's no way to get to the orange unless you take away the peel, right? Now, if you like orange peels and you eat orange peels, then maybe you, you don't have a problem. I'm assuming most people um, don't like the orange peel. So with this, the Pais can say this is a little different because that's called the way you normally, that's called derech achila. That's the way you eat, the normal way to eat an orange or an apple is to peel it off. So therefore in that scenario, taking the bad from the good would be okay. Right? That's, uh, um, that, that's the way the place can say it. Again, we'll get back. These are just some examples. We're gonna go back as the Shem and discuss and discuss all these cases. Okay. Um, also, there's a question here. If you have a handful of cutlery, can you set the table with it? And then put the extra cutlery away. Are you? I, I'm not sure if that question is talking about you're setting the table right before the meal, which would be okay if you're taking the good from the bad. But to put the put to put the extra away if it's in your hand, then that would be butter, and that's not for that is not for uh, immediate use. Which it's actually a big disagreement exactly how you define immediate use. Let's say somebody likes the table to be set Shabbos Friday night because they enjoy. Right, it's a long Friday night on, 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 on the winter, let's say. And they enjoy when they're sitting on the couch, relaxing after the Suda, and they like to look up and see a set table. Is that called instant, is that called instant gratification, in which case it's not butter because it's, it's considered immediate use? Or do we say that that's not immediate use because you're not using the set table until the next day? That's something Bez Hashem will discuss um, when, we get to, when we get to the immediate use subject. Okay, so this was just an example. Now let's just understand where where the halacha is coming from. If we understand the background to the halacha, then we could understand more why this makes such a difference. So as we discussed, the lamites malachas is based on what was done in the Mishkan. When we are keeping Shabbos, it's not about, I mean, it's about resting, but that's not the main part of the Shabbos. The main part of the Shabbos is not to rest. It's that we're not doing the work that was done the way it was done in the Mishkan, and by doing, by not doing the work that the way it was done in the Mishkan, we are acknowledging that Hashem created the world and he rested on Shabbos. And obviously Hashem's, the representation of Hashem is the Beis HaMikdash or the Mishkan. So whatever they didn't, they stopped doing work in the Mishkan on Shabbos. So by us imitating them, we are showing that we acknowledge that Hashem created the world and he rested on Shabbos. That's what Shabbos is all about. That's why, like we said, if somebody is Mechal Shabbos, they're considered as if they're not keeping any of the Torah. Because <clears throat> the Shabbos is about acknowledging that Hashem created the world. Right? So now, how did they do? What was Bayer for in the Beis HaMikdash? So Bayer was to separate when, when you took the wheat, and they gathered the wheat, and then they piled up the wheat. And there's a few different steps that were done. But the Bayer is basically, they took the bad parts of the wheat out from from the wheat in order to get down, ultimately to get down to flour, right? So what they did on an industrial level, you would, you, the normal way to do things is you take the bad from the good and you're usually separating it for immediate use, right? Again, the bad from the good, because it's a lot easier. There's a lot less bad than good. So you have little pebbles or little, uh, the chaff from the wheat. So you're taking that out because that would be the normal way to do it. That's the way you do it. And, and um, you're going to use utensils, right? You're going to use machinery or sifters or sieves, whatever it is. You're going to use machines to make your life a lot easier. And you're going to do it, you're going to, you're going to do it for immediately. You, you go through the whole grain process. You don't just leave it sitting around. So those basically three ways, those are the ways you do the way they did butter for the Mishkan. Right? They didn't have silverware in the Mishkan, as far as I know, that they did butter with. It was basically all in the process of, cre of creating flour and grain. So therefore, since that's the way it was done in the Mishkan on an industrial level, so therefore we have to make, we have to make our butter not like that. So therefore we need to meet all three requirements of not doing it in the, on the industrial level. 
So if we meet all three requirements, then therefore that's not what was done in the Mishkan, and therefore it's no longer butter. Okay, so that's that's basically, again, just to, just to reiterate, the reason why you need to meet all three requirements for it not to be butter is because if you have one of the, even if you even have one of the requirements, let's say you're taking the bad from the good, that's similar to the way it was done on an industrial and in a, on a business-like level, and therefore we have to rest from that. So therefore you have to meet all three in order to make sure that you are not doing it the way it was done in the times in the times of the Mishkan. Okay, so now, so then that's that's basically a uh, hakdama to, to the halachas. Okay, now, the first thing to understand is um, what is a mixture? Okay, I, I'm, I don't I don't think we have to do any hands on yet, right? What's a mixture and what's included in mixtures? Okay, so basically a mixture is two or more types of things that are together. What together is we'll get to soon, Ben Zashem, right? But it's basically something that's mixed. For example, if you have on a table on one end of the table, you have a fork. And on the other end of the table, you have a knife. That is clearly not butter because that's not a mixture. As they get closer to each other, you start having maybe possibly butter issues, right? Until they get one on top of the other, then you're going to have an issue of butter. So that's something that we're going to have to discuss also exactly how close do you call, do you call something becoming a mixture, okay? But what, what, what goes under the category, what types of things are under the category of butter that we have to be aware of? So there's butter on food. I think everybody's aware of that. There's butter on clothing. Many people are not aware of that. There's butter on utensils. There's butter on books. And there's butter on toys. Okay? So any of these things can cause, can, you can have a butter issue. Or, and it's essentially what we're saying is anything that has any sort of mixture. But those are, a few of those are toys people are unaware of, books, svarim. When somebody wants to clean up a shul after davening and put away svarim and nobody's coming back to shul for a bunch of hours till mincha, that's a butter issue, right? Even though the, mad, the, the, the person means very well in cleaning the, bes, the, the besmerish or the shul, but it could very well be that if they don't do it properly, then they could be either on, on butter. Okay, now an interesting leniency, which is if there's one of each item, then that's not butter. Meaning, so using the example we just said, you had a, a fork and a knife, just two, just one fork, one knife. That's not butter. You need to have at least at least two in order for it to, to be butter. Okay, you need to have at least two of the, the items. So two forks, two knives, and that would be, that's butter. Just one and one is not considered, that's not considered butter. Okay, fine. Next is what's considered different. What is considered different? So if, if it's food that has different taste, then that's two different, that's considered two different um, items. So you could have the top of the chicken and the bottom of the chicken. If they taste different, obviously, I guess, I don't know if it's so obvious for me, it's certainly not obvious. Um, but if, they, if, they're, if they're baked or cooked in a way that they taste the same, then it's going to be, um, then it's going to be um, not butter because it's, it tastes the same. But I'm assuming that you could have, you, most of the time they taste different. So therefore it's, even though they're both chicken, if it tastes different, then there's, there's a butter issue with that which means that if you have a tray of tops and bottoms of chickens and they look different, they taste different, then there's butter on that, okay? Um, let's say they have different names, but seemingly they're the same type of food, but they have different names. So you'll have uh, um, soda bottles, right? So if you say that is, is a cherry soda different than a Coca-Cola, Right, so now do you have butter on the bottles, right? If so, since they have different names, then it's going to be it's going to be butter, right? If it has different uses, then it's also also going to be butter, yeah. And 
um, what happens if it's different sizes, right? So do you have to start calculating? Do you have to start calculating how big your pieces of chicken are or your pieces of schnitzel are? And then there's butter. The answer to that is no, that's not butter. Unless it's a very distinct difference in sizes, it's not going to be butter. Okay, for example, cookies, right? So you have bakery cookies or, or somebody made homemade cookies. So it's different. There's different sizes. Not everyone is exactly the same. Then that's not butter. But if you have a large cookie, I mean, like you have those black and white cookies, you have the minis and then you have the, the large size. That would be butter because that's clearly a difference. Even though they're both black and white cookies, but since since one is much larger than the other, then it's then it's a problem. Okay. Um, okay. So let's try and go through back back. I, I should have said some other examples of. So we said chicken tops and chicken bottoms. You have well done meat and rare meat. Obviously, if different types of meats, even if they're on the same tray, that's considered butter. Unless there's unless you separate it on the tray, you have one side is is uh, dark meat or well done. And the other side is the rare. Jelly beans or can or any sort of candy that's different color and different taste, then that is that's also going to be butter. If they have the same taste but different colors, then that's really not so clear whether that's considered butter, because essentially it's the same thing. They just it just possibly looks different. So psychologically, people think it tastes different, but it doesn't necessarily taste different. Okay. Um, So what about fruits and vegetables that are made, uh, let's say tomatoes. So you could have different types of tomatoes. If they're clearly different, then that's going to be considered butter. Same thing with apples. If you have a green apple and a red apple, then that's considered butter. I know there's many types of red apples. So I'm not sure um, if, if I don't know, it depends how specific you are about your, your desire and your what for, for apples. But uh, um, I don't know, gala apples and red delicious apples. If there's something really different about them and you like and you want specifically those type of apples, then that would be considered, that would be considered butter, right? Also the same food, but some pieces are broken and some pieces are whole. Matzah, for example, right? You can have many times in matzah, you have a box of matzah and there's broken pieces in there that's going to be considered butter. So if you, if you just want to put a box of matzah out and you want to remove the broken pieces before you put it on the table, that's for sure butter. Or even if you, you, want to, you want to take out the good pieces and leave the broken pieces, then if you're setting the table four or five hours before the meal and you want to put out the matzah, that would also be butter, right? Because it's different... Uh, it's different, uh, it's really clearly a different size, okay? So now, um, how about a matzo ball in a soup? Is that considered butter? Let's say somebody gets served a soup and there's a, there's a matzo ball or a piece of chicken in it or a big vegetable, that is not considered butter because that's not a mixture, it's very large and it's, we don't look at that like a mixture. Noodles, though, is very small. So since it's very small, it's considered part of the, part of the soup. And that, we, that would be considered um, butter. Same thing if a fly falls into the soup. If somebody has the guts to just remove the fly and then eat it, then, you would, uh, then it's, that would be a butter situation. So you'd have to take it off in a way that it's not, it's not butter. Okay. So let's see, let me see some questions here. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get to the, the check, taking out the chicken, the skin and the bones, we're gonna get to that. Um, the halachas of butter do apply to Yom Tov. Yes, they do, but there's a slight difference between Yom Tov and, and Shabbos, which Be'ez Hashem will get to. Um, 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 yeah. Oh, the immediate use. I, I don't remember how I explained it, 
But in the Mishkan, it was not necessarily for immediate use. I might have said that it isn't for immediate use. If that's the case, I apologize. In the Mishkan, it was not necessarily for immediate use. They were going to use it later on. So therefore, so therefore, um, using it for immediate use is not considered butter. But that one is a little different because immediate use is considered like, like somebody just asked about the derech achilo. Immediate use is really, it's clear when you're doing it for immediate use that you're not doing it for, for on an industrial level. You're doing it right now because that's the way you eat. We're going to see that through derech achilo, there are many leniencies if you're going to do the butter in the regular way, like we said with the orange peel, peeling the orange, since that's the regular way to eat it, that can't be considered an industrial level butter. Um, yeah, so putting away toys is a big issue with immediate use, right? Take, putting a, putting a, um, toys away for later on is a big issue, right? That gets into, and Abez Hashem will discuss it, not tonight though, is, is that called, like having a clean house, is that can, called considered benefiting for immediate use or not? Okay, Bez Hashem, we'll discuss that, but it won't, it won't be tonight. Small vegetables in a soup. So again, you have, to use your, you have to use your judgment. If it's very small, the vegetables, then you would not be, a, then it would have to be, a, it would be a butter issue. If they're a little larger, then it's not. I know I can't, I can't, it's, that's what gets vague about Hilchus butter. It's very difficult to give an exact, um, an exact, an exact uh, measurement, right? But a vegetable soup, you know, small vegetables. I mean, if you, usually, and the way I understand it, is a vegetable soup has extremely small vegetables and, or like a mushroom barley soup, that would be butter. That's considered one big mixture. Same thing with a chalant. That's considered one big mixture, but a big potato in a chalant is not. So anything that's small and similar in size, then it's going to be, that's going to be, to be butter. Now with removing vegetables from the soup, or removing a fly from the soup, it's very, there's a very simple, even though we're getting a little bit out of, out of order here of what we're discussing, but there's a very easy way to get around that, which is not something we're discussing yet, but since it's coming up, I don't want to leave it, leave it hanging, which is when you remove a little bit of good together with the bad, then that's not butter. So if you just take a little bit of soup with the fly, or a little bit of soup with the noodles, and then that, that's not considered butter. Because again, the way they did butter in the Mishkan was they were taking the, the bad from the good. They didn't take some good together with the bad from the, from the good. So since you're changing it from what it was done on an industrial level, so therefore that's going to be okay. And it's also not a full separation because you're separating the good together with the bad. Okay, so that's one way of... Uh, Getting, getting, uh, getting around, getting around that. Okay, now toys, right? Toys with different colors, like Lego, right? I would, I would say that Lego is a major issue, a major issue of butter. Again, if there's the large pieces and the small pieces, then that wouldn't be considered a, a mixture, right? But if they're different colors, by Lego it makes a difference, right? By Lego it doesn't, it makes a difference. Of, of the color, so therefore there's gonna be butter. Same thing with chess pieces, checker pieces. That's all That's all gonna be considered butter, right? So you can say, so now, okay, so now how do we get around this? Does that mean that the house has to stay messy for the entire Shabbos? Cause we're not allowed to clean it up. It's not for tonight, we'll discuss that there are ways that um, you can get around, you can get around doing this, right? Clothing, like we said, Clothing has butter, right? Now, what's the difference in clothing? Yeah, so material, if the, it's a different material, let's say you want a, a cotton shirt and, or a jacket, a cotton jacket, and there's, it's, it's together with your wool jackets, that would be considered butter. If you want um, a different size or a different style, that's also butter. If you have a bunch of white shirts, let's say, and you just, you just want to take one of the white shirts and you decide you want this one as opposed to that one, that's not butter because it's all the same type, unless there's something very different about one shirt from the other. But if they're all basically the same, then it's not a, then it's not, then, then it's not butter. Cutlery, right, like we said, is definitely butter. 
But what about this is there's I mean a lot of a lot of what we're saying is disagreements. But what about different size spoons, a soup spoon, and a dessert spoon? So then that would really depend. If <clears throat> excuse me, if you're careful to never use a soup spoon for dessert or a dessert spoon for soup, then that's considered butter because that's considered a total, a total different entity, right? One is large and, and one is small and you never mix the two. But if you like me, I don't particularly care which type of spoon that I get. So to me, there's a spoon is a spoon. Obviously, if I have a spoon and a fork, I consider two different things. But if a spoon is a spoon, it's just a way to get the food to your mouth, which I guess doesn't, doesn't speak so highly for me because I don't particularly care how the food gets to my mouth, right? But, but uh, you use, um, if you don't care, it's not butter. But if you do care, which I imagine many people do care, then that would be considered butter, even though they're both spoons. They're both spoons, right? Um, okay, so that's basically, um, that's basically, let's see. So if Lego spread all over the floor, is it considered a mixture? So as long as they're not um, piled up one on top of the other, then it's not considered, it's not considered a mixture. Right. Basically, the rule for mixtures are at first glance, if you look at this and you say to yourself, oh, that's a mixture, then it's a mixture. If you if at first glance you look and say, oh, that's not a mixture, it's just stuff that's strewn all over the floor, then that is that's uh, that's not going to be considered a mixture. Right. I, I don't know. OK, it's a little bit it's a little bit confusing exactly how to how to define that. But I imagine if the, if the Lego spread all over the floor, then a lot of it will not be a mixture because you just have one piece here and then a few inches away another piece, a few inches away another, that wouldn't be a mixture. But um, I imagine there is, is going to be a pile of them, in which case that pile would be a mixture and the stuff that's spread out all around it is, is not a mixture. Okay, next is there are, you have, there's two ways of having a mixture mixed together like we've been discussing like a like a pile of anything that would be a mixture and then there's attached attached is considered a mixture right so um you have like we said the peel of the orange that's considered a mixture why because it's attached to the orange chicken skin that's attached to the chicken or or um Fish skin, the skin of the fish that's attached to the fish, that's considered butter, not because it's a mixture, because if you really take a step back, you say that's not a mixture, right? That's the, the skin is very clearly defined from the from the meat, but it doesn't make a difference because it's attached. Anything that's attached, stuck together, is considered a mixture. Okay. Two things that are just next to each other. I think we might have said it before, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. Two things that are just next to each other is not considered a mixture. So if you have two sidurim, let's say, right, or a fork and a knife, I think we did say this. Um, if we have a fork and a knife right next to each other, that's not a mixture, right? It would have to be something that's uh, that would be like uh, in a pile. Okay. So what are some examples of things that are attached to each other? So like we said, fruits and vegetables, um, fat on meat. That's also considered. Um, also, if the soup, if the soup congeals and then on the top you get a layer of fat, that's clearly considered attached, right? Eggs, eggs is considered butter. Oil on top of water is also considered attached. Nuts and shells, and then and then this next one, a lot of people are not aware of, grape stems with the grapes, right? Since the stem of the grape is attached to the grape, that's considered Butter. Okay. So if you wanted to just take off all the stems in the morning and then you're going to serve those grapes in the afternoon, even if you pull the grape away from the stem, which is what you'd have to do, not which is what many people do, is they grab the grape and they pull the stem. Again, there's ways around it. We'll discuss it as the chef. But on the basic level, when you're taking the stem off the grape, 
you should pull the stem, you should pull the grape from the stem, meaning you're taking the good from the bad, not the stem from the grape, right? And also make sure you're not doing it for much later. Um, food wrappers stuck to food is also considered butter, right? Um, so therefore, you want to take candies. If you want to take candies and open up and open up the candies for the middle of Shabbos afternoon, for later on for Shabbos party, whatever it is, and you want to take the candies out of the wrappers, that is butter. But again, that's if the it's if it's meaning if the candy. If it's a high quality candy, I think I think this is the way it goes. If it's a high quality candy and the candy is not stuck to the wrapper, so then it would be considered two separate entities. But if it's stuck to the wrapper, which a lot of candies do, especially in the summer, and they melt down a little bit, then that would be considered butter. So therefore, you would only be allowed to take the candies out of the wrappers if, um, if you're doing it for immediate use. And then also you should pull the candy away from the package, not the package off from the candy, but the natural thing to do is, is to pull the, the wrapper off from the candy. So again, if it's stuck together, then that's a problem. Okay, now there is an interesting machloikis if you're allowed to do this, and I hope I say it over correctly because it, it, sounds, a little, it sounds a little strange that you're able to do this. Okay, so let's say you had the Lego or your cutlery and you wanted to set the table. And like we said, you have a pile of cutlery. That's a mixture. That is butter. Now you want to set the table Friday night for Shabbos morning. Right? Can you take that pile? I really would do it to show an example of it, but uh, I, don't have it. I don't have it with me here. No, it's fine. It's fine. Let's say you take the pile of silverware or Lego, and you hold it, no, no it's, it's fine, and you, you hold it and you drop it down onto the table. Basically, you have a pie. You just washed uh, 10 forks, 10 knives, 10 spoons, and you want to set the table. Now, it's all a mixture. We said that that's butter. So what you do is you hold it about five feet, I don't know, five feet, three feet above your table, and you drop it. And then, of course, what happens, it spreads out all over the place. So now you have a fork there and you have a knife there and you have a spoon there and it's all over and it's not a mixture. You look at it and say, oh, that's not a mixture. That's just utensils. Can you do that on Shabbos? And now basically you took a mixture and you unmixed them. Is that allowed on Shabbos? Right? Um, so there are many Paiskim that say that that's allowed. Okay? Um... Because the bottom line is, where does it say that you're not allowed to drop your, your utensils down on top of a table? And if you did it by mistake, then for sure it works. So why can't I do it on purpose? I'm not, it's not butter. What malach am I doing when I do that? Okay, so there are those that are lenient with this. Certainly, and if you're really desperate to uh, you have a simcha or something and you want to make sure you set the table Friday night for Shabbos day, and you're not going to have time, et cetera, et cetera, then you should certainly can, uh, you can certainly rely on it. There are other ways to, when washing dishes to, to avoid the butter, which again is not, 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 uh, doesn't go according to all the opinions, which Bez Hashem will get to. But uh, when we discuss each, you take, right, doing piece by piece, um, not everybody agrees that you could do that, meaning, Okay, once I brought it up, might as well might as well discuss it. The opinion is Rav Shemazam and Obrach says that when you wash the dishes, if you then pick up now you have the pile, right? You just wash them all and you put them in a pile. Then, or you just have a pile, you put it into the sink, and then you pick up one spoon, wash that spoon. That that's that's not butter because you wanted the spoon. That's good from the bed. You're doing it for immediate use because you want to wash it and you're not using the utensil. So it meets the three criteria of allowing butter. And now you're, sta you're standing there in the kitchen with a spoon in your hand. Where's the butter, right? Or if you have the pile of wash dishes and then you take, instead of just putting them all on a towel and drying them that way and you know wrapping the towel around it and drying it that way, you pick up one spoon and you dry it. Now it's in your hand, it's not butter. You could put it away in the spoon drawer or go bring it to the dining room and put it on the table. 
It's going to be a lot of walking, going back and forth, or just put it down, make a pile of spoons, make a pile of forks, make a pile of knives. Rishon Mazar Menorah says that that's allowed because that's not butter. Others disagree and say that that's not necessarily a a good etzim. All right, but there. Okay, so we'll 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 review that as we as we go through all the halachas of butter. Um, and ha- has has to go through the practical examples. Um, yeah, so uh, there was something else I just wanted to say. Um, I don't know if we should get involved. It's already, what time is it? It's already a minute to 10. Okay, there's, there is an opinion, another opinion, and we'll leave it with this. Um, if you have a mixture, right? We said that taking the bad from the good is a problem. If you have a mixture where you like both of them, you just want to separate them, then that's not considered butter. Meaning, well, like, let's say take the jelly beans, right? The person can like to use jelly beans as an example for butter. So you don't like a particular color of jelly bean. So we said that that's clearly butter because that's taking the batter. You want to take out, let's say you don't like the, see, I think it's usually the black color or by licorice or whatever it is. I think it's the black that most people don't like. So they want to take the black jelly bean out from the pile. That is clearly butter, right? But let's say you're trying to make some sort of uh, um, contest where you just want to separate the colors of the jelly beans. You like all of them. You're not separating them because you like some and you don't like others, et cetera, et cetera. You just want to, um, you just want to separate them, or you're you're mindlessly playing with the candy on Shabbos afternoon, and you say, "Hey, let me let me just separate it." But there's no there's no rhyme or reason to it that that's not considered butter. Butter has to be done for a reason. There's got to be a reason why you're separating it. So therefore, therefore that you would be allowed to do. But again, not because if you want them to be separated, then that's more of an issue. This is where you you really don't care. You just you're just you know playing around with it, want to see how it looks, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Then that would not be that would not be considered butter. Okay, so let me just see other if you have anybody has any questions, we'll stop with that. If anybody has any questions, please post them now. Um, no, you cannot put the cutlery down on the table and separate it with your hand because that would be butter. The only way to do it would be to drop it and let it let it fly all over the place. I don't know if that's such a pr- good practical. Uh, it's not a good practical example of how to. Of, uh, I mean, it's a practical example whether that's feasible for everybody to do. I'm not so sure, but uh, but that many of us can do allow that. But not not you can't separate it by hand. Then that would be butter. Um, okay. Next question is clothing on a chair. Um. I'm not sure. You want to take all the shirts from the, the pile, and then you have a lot of as you have a lot of different clothing on a chair, and you want to sit on the chair. And you're separating. I think I guess what the question is is that you're taking the shirts. Me, me, why are you separating the shirts? If you're separating the shirts from the socks because you want them to be separated, then that will be butter. If you don't particularly care, you're just trying to get everything off the chair, then that would not be butter. But that brings us to another point, which is, um, okay, it's not for now. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to confuse things, but as Hashem will do that next week. Um, yeah, at what age do kids need to, to learn not to separate the Lego that's in a pile? See, so when kids are doing, playing with the Lego or with toys, Let's say they take out a chess game or a checkers game or Lego, right? And they want particular pieces, then that's allowed because they're going to play with it right then and there. It's only an issue when they're putting it away for later or later or for when they're done playing with it. Then that would be the, but that's when the butter issue kicks in. So um, at what age? Well, only once a child really can understand what butter means. Um, but there's a, there's a bigger issue. If the child cleans up on their own, which I would hope everybody has the schus to have something like that, then fine. But you telling your child to clean it up has more of a problem because as we learned in this week's parsha, 
you it's, it's ato vincho vitecha. You have to you you cannot tell family members to do malacha for you even if they don't know what they're doing. So that's more that would be more of an issue. So if they do it on their own until they really understand butter, we'll let them do that. It's got to be seven, eight, nine years old, um, and the maturity level is getting older and older as as we go along. In, in my in my opinion, I think the level of maybe it should be age twenty. The level of chinuch, at least by males, I don't know, not by females, it's probably much younger. But uh, that was a joke, by the way. Um, um, but if you're telling them to do it and you know they're going to do something wrong, that's that's more of an issue, right? Can you pick out? Oh, so can you do butter for your friend? That is an excellent question. Can you? Your friend wants the jelly beans. I'm assuming what you mean is you don't like the black jelly beans and your friend does like them. Can you do it on behalf of your friend? From what I remember correct, if I remember correctly, the place can say that that's okay. To do it on behalf of your friend would be would be okay. Oh, so how long before the meal is considered immediate use? We haven't really discussed that, but since you asked it, we'll say it. Um, the, the, one of my rebbeim told me that three hours, not more than three hours. Really, it should be done as close to the meal as possible. But not more. Three hours is a good is a good uh, a good uh, uh, time time frame to use, right? Um, can you take a bucket of mixed cutlery to the table and pull out a fork and then a knife? Yeah, if that's what you if you're taking the good from the bad, you can. But it has to be right before the meal or within three hours of the meal. That would be fine. You can't uh, you can't go and um, and do this hours and hours before, because then that's not immediate use, right? So that's, uh, that would be, but, but if you're doing it immediately before the meal, then as long as you're not pushing away the, the cutlery that you don't want, and you're taking the good from the bad, then it's okay. Is a pile of whole fruits considered a mixture, meaning a different types of fruits is if, yes, it's considered a mixture unless it's, uh, unless some are way bigger than the others. Other, but if they're all basically the same thing, then uh, yeah. So immediately before is three hours. Yes, immediately before would be considered three. I mean, less than that, less than that would be better, but three hours, you can certainly rely on three hours before the meal, that would be considered immediate. Um, if a lollipop falls on the ground and gets dirty, can you wash it off? That's an excellent question. We really have to get to that when we discuss washing fruits and vegetables, right? Can you wash fruits and vegetables from the dirt? So if there's a lot of dirt on there, and it's very, meaning if you're washing it just because that's what you do when things fall on the floor, then for sure it's okay. If there's, you know, you see a little bit of a crumb, not much, that's also okay. But if you see a substantial amount of dirt on there, then that, and it's stuck to it, then that would be considered, that would be considered uh, butter. Okay, um, I guess that's it. I hope it was um, clear. If it wasn't so clear or needs explanation, please remind me next week to, to re-explain. We haven't really gotten involved in the whole specific cases of butter. We just discussed the basic mixtures and hopefully next week, Brother Hashem, we'll get to the more specific examples. All right, a good talk, everybody. Very nice.